I, I want to open each one um, in, a, in a similar way because um, I know that there are some people who are tuning in uh, at the specific times of our start. I want you to know that uh, uh, character and capital preeminence is what this administration is all about. Uh, we see that for Morehouse. Character means uh, generating first-rate men. Uh, capital means having a first-rate campus. We have the right provost uh, to uh, help to pull that off in the way in which he's working with the faculty. And we have to move toward a capital, uh, a capital campaign. I need you to understand, uh, just in my own experience, you talk about benchmarking things and looking at others and seeing who has done this uh, before. What you're going to witness today, and you've seen one already, these three initiatives are, uh, are the kinds of things that are at the heart of major capital campaigns. This DREAMS initiative um, is squarely at the heart of what you're going to see uh, at, of a capital campaign here at Morehouse College. Provost Campbell and I have already been on the road talking with prospective donors about this. There's great uh, interest and excitement in it and probable uh, investment near term rather than uh, long term. Uh, really excited about all three, but in particular, this goes to the heart of our brand, uh, and those of you who have already read up on it will see that. Let me get out of the way because we do want to leave time for Q&A, but uh, I welcome Provost Campbell again. So I want to try to, this of all of the initiatives um, that I'll speak to today has the most robust um, description. And so I hope that everyone here has a, has, a, has a program that is a little longer than the others and describes quite a bit of where we are in our thinking. Um, it's, it's been a fairly robust set of conversations among the faculty uh, and with others uh, on these topics. I want to say just very quickly that this is the combination of three initiatives. Um, and I'll, I'll say a little bit more about, about that in, in a moment. Um, but at the core, we know that this is an area where we must be consequential. That, that, um, and this focuses around issues of equity, justice, um, the, again, the, the, the places that, the, the context, the conditions, the policies that affect black boys and black men. Um, we need to, we need, there are, I mean, there, there are just too many obvious reasons for us to be engaged in this conversation. Um, it is a part of our history. It has always been a part of our history. It is a part of our DNA, um, and we are essentially reshaping how we are going to be doing it into the future. Um, so we know that we need to be consequential here. We are doing this work from a decidedly asset-based uh, uh, position. And I have my colleague here, um, uh, uh, David Wall Rice, uh, professor of psychology in the back, and uh, also the assistant provost for student success. And he has a quote that I often use, um, and, and I think it's one of the most powerful things I've heard um, ever. Uh, and, and he says something of this, of, of like this. We do this work here at Morehouse um, we can do this work because we think fundamentally differently about our young men, about young black boys and black men. They're not broken and in need of being fixed, but they're full of genius and potential, and it is our job to awaken it and to, and to bring it to life. Um, that is a really profound statement, and that is what, at the heart, these initiatives are designed to, to do. Um, again, at the core, they are about research and engagement. And I'll say a lot more about what I mean by that. I'm going to begin again by playing a clip. Uh, and this clip is about, um, well, I'll just let you watch. I think one of the most exciting things about data is that, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's giving us extra senses. It's expanding upon, you know, our, uh, you know, our ability to perceive the world. And it, it actually ends up giving us the opportunity to make, make things tangible again and to actually get a perspective on ourselves, both as individuals and also as society. And there's always that moment in, in data visualization where you're looking at, you know, 
tons and tons and tons of data. The point is not to look at the tons and tons and tons of data, but what are the stories that emerge out of it. He said, look, give me the home street address of everyone who entered New York State Prison last year and the home street address of everyone who left New York State Prison last year. And we said, look, let's get the numbers, put it on, on a map, and actually show it to people. And when we first produced our Brooklyn map, which was the first one we did, they hit the floor. Not because nobody knew this. You know, everyone knew anecdotally how concentrated um, the effect of incarceration was, but no one had actually seen it based on actual data. We started to show these remarkably uh, intensive concentrations of people going in and out of prison, highly disproportionately located in very small areas around the city. And what we found is that the home addresses of incarcerated people correlates very highly with poverty and with people of color. You had a justice system which, by all accounts, is supposed to be essentially based on a case-by-case case individual decision of justice. But when you looked at the map over time, what you really were seeing was this mass population um, movement out and... So I'm going to stop it there. Um, it goes on. Um, but the point, part of my point for, for playing that clip is that too often when we hear a story like that or hear something, uh, the statistics, the that, that, um, that are presented in news and so on, um, the, the subject is the, the, the people, um, those folks, uh-oh, uh, Henry, I don't know if you have a, a cord that you can get me. Um, so those folks that are, uh, that are the, the focus of all of that movement, part of what we're asking ourselves is, uh, or it's saying to ourselves is, that is the wrong question. There's a question about what, what are the financial motivations um, that go on in a situation like that? What if those resources could be uh, diverted and spent in other ways? If you, if you watch that, that clip longer, you'll see that there's, there are lots of blocks in that area of Brooklyn that have um, multi-million dollar expenditures in just the transport back and forth alone. What if you use that to help support uh, education as opposed to um, that activity? So, so partly what we're saying is um, we want to engage in, so we want to do research and engage, engagement across a number of different areas. So DREAMS is an acronym, meaning diverse research and engagement on agape, which is the notion of love that comes out of King, men, so the, the idea that we think about the, the make black boys and black men uh, a central component of, of the reason why we're investigating. Um, and STEAM, that we live in a 21st century innovation economy and the importance of, of engaging science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics is really critical. What it means to engage in this, in this work, um, Research means asking the right questions, right? So this, this, this million dollar block is a, is a key example that we, we need to make sure that we're not asking the stereotypical questions, but asking the really deep, hard questions that complicate the narrative, that really force us to, to, to reconcile some uncomfortable realities. Um, uh, we need to do the highest quality analysis, and we need to ideate on solutions. One of the things that we've talked a lot about is that the, that area of research is the kind of stuff that goes on in our heads, right? It's the stuff that we think about. We maybe, we maybe we put it on paper, but it's all mostly stuff that, we, that, that we're doing in our heads. That's what academics like to do. But we at Morehouse are not satisfied with that. We're, we've never been. We want to make sure that things don't stop at, at thinking, but engage the doing. So we want this, our work, to live in the world. So we need to share, we need to engage, we need to talk to communities. We need to put our stuff in places that aren't just about the, 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 the five academics who read that particular crazy journal. We need to talk to folks, um, and some of my, my faculty colleagues are laughing because they know it's true, um, there are those kinds of journals. Um, but, but we need to be in spaces and doing things that are art, 
art, artistic, performances, multimedia, all kinds of ways. Um, we need to have convenings, gatherings, national conversations. Um, we, need to de we are about developing leaders. And so a central component of this is making sure that in doing this work, we are involving our students, sent putting our students at the center, and training the next generation of change agents. And we need, most importantly, to act. Right? We cannot stop at simply talking about these things. We cannot simply uh, uh, write a paper. We have to be about effective impact, consequential impact in the world. So in the, so I did not lay them out here, but in the brochure that you have, the synopsis that you have, there are a number of themes that are, that are laid out. Um, very big, lofty themes like violence. Um, uh, uh, there are, I mean, so I, I don't think I need to go into to, to that topic. I, um, I think we all in this room fully appreciate and understand uh, the, the importance and the relevance of thinking about that, particularly at, at this moment. Um, and so, and there are others. Um, and what do, the, what do we want to do around these themes? We want to gather cohorts of our, our internal faculty and external folks, external leaders, students, alumni, thinkers and doers who are engaged in this work, whether they're community activists, whether they're part of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, rappers or uh, um, uh, you know, scholars at, at Harvard or at other places, we want to make sure that we are engaging a full breadth of voices in what we're thinking about. Importantly, we need to be about talking with those who have differences of opinion on these matters. So we need to think about closed door conversations, conversations with police organizations, all kinds of, of really hard conversations. Um, we wanna make sure that we are asking the right questions, doing the highest quality analysis, making students central, interacting with others, and making sure that we're producing things and ending with action. A key part of making sure that students are at the center of this is a a scholars program which has a phased approach. We want to target one set of activities for those who are coming in the door. We want to target a different set of activities for those who are kind of in their beginning phase of, of Morehouse and those who are kind of getting ready to leave us, right? So each one of those groups has a slightly different um, uh, profile and set of things that, that they need from us and opportunities. We want to make sure that, that students are engaging in real project-based work, experiential learning. So imagine um, uh, taking a topic and thinking about, you know, working with faculty and, and, and colleagues and community leaders as a cohort where students are playing a central role in asking the right questions, finding the right, um, doing the right analysis, and using that work to drive what they should be doing, what, how they should be interacting and engaging uh, on, on a topic of interest, on a topic of importance. Um, we know that in order to do this well, part of what we're gonna need is the right kind of physical space. This is something that we've talked about. Among other things, this is something that we, that we know that we're gonna need um, to support making sure that we have the right kind of, of physical space to bring together the right voices, to house uh, the right kinds of folks, and to make sure that we're having the right kind of conversations, to be able to put on display the work of students that, that come out of these projects. Um, we should have a space, and we, we certainly have examples of them now, but we should have a space that embodies the work that we're doing, that's beautiful, safe, celebratory, um, and, and is at the heart asset-based, not about being broken, but about recognizing genius and bringing that, bringing that to life. So what can we do now to get going? We can begin to establish these cohorts and start identifying the right kinds of projects to get going on. Um, there's certainly uh, no shortage of interesting, important, impactful questions to engage right now. 
um, and we want to get going. We want to start forming these cohorts, getting to work, putting our work out into the, out into the space, and, and uh, getting to action. Um, there are lots of individual examples of people who are already doing that on our campus, uh, faculty, staff alike, alumni in our, in our alumni body, and partly what this is about is gathering those forces, producing the cohorts of that activity to make it even stronger. We need to convene some national conversations, and there are some that are coming up. Um, we are going to be, our, our Crown Forum this year is, has as a theme, Black Lives Matter. We are already engaging in who we're going to be bringing to our campus to think about and integrate with these ideas. So, I asked the same questions as I asked last time to you all, which are, um, what ways do you see uh, supporting this initiative, either directly or by, by being a connector um, between us and, and others who might be um, of value to this, to this work? How, how, would you, how would you define being successful in this? If you're sitting out there as an alum looking at us saying, wow, that was great. They, they, they really did something there. What would that mean? What would that look like to you? And how do we get there?